Well, howdy diddly dandy there. Charms to Zai, Captain of the Steves. And today, chance for you guys in the viewerverse, I've got some No Man's Sky news for you. Heck yes. So, when you log into No Man's Sky right now and you hit up a new game, you can see the expedition tile. It says the expedition ends in three weeks' time. But if you do the math, that takes, well, it's the 1st of October right now. It's going to take us up to about the 21st of October. Okay. However, we know updates don't happen on a Monday. No, uh, it won't happen on the 21st. It may happen on the Tuesday or Wednesday, the 22nd or 23rd. So, do you think that it's going to deliver in another expedition straight afterwards? The reason why I say another expedition is because we normally have the reduxes start at the start of December and they go through to the start or, or secondary week of January. They could squeeze on another expedition. They have done expeditions back to back in the past. There could be one on the agenda however we've also got some fireworks currently in the quicksilver store and after those fireworks there's nothing nothing left inside of the quicksilver files so hello games needs to drop something else into there and i think that we're going to see some content we already know that there's quite a lot of content coming through data mining which we get onto in a moment so don't you go away because we're the data mining stuff but i think those fireworks looking at the current percentage and the current speed that they're going at it looks like Hello Games is trying to line it up with the first week of November. We're here in the UK. We have Guy Fawkes or Fireworks Night. Always remember that 5th of November or 4th of November, which I can never remember. Yes, so we've got that date as well. I think the first week of November, the fireworks are going to finish unlocking. It might be over that weekend of the first week because we know it speeds up a bit over the weekends. But we should see those fireworks unlock within the first week of November is what I'm thinking, people. OK, so if we don't see an update right after the Aquarius expedition ends, so on the 22nd, 23rd, if nothing happens, I think something has got to happen, got to happen when those fireworks expire. Because not only are those fireworks expiring, get this, the PlayStation 5 Pro launches, and we already know from things suggested by people at Hello Games who have actually put out posts on the Twitterverse to say how awesome and how glorious No Man's Sky looks on the PlayStation 5. We already know it's in the works. So I'm imagining we're going to see an update for next gen, next gen, <laughs> PlayStation 5 Pro go live and with that maybe even some optimization for other platforms other consoles fingers crossed heck yes so i think something is definitely going to happen either between the towards the end of october and early november i think we're definitely on the cards for an update around that window people inside the view of us so i did mention data mining and files didn't i well there's a reason why i mentioned that as well Inside of the data mining of the files, we found that there could be purple systems coming into the verse. So just like we've got cadmium systems, emerald systems, and we've got the in indium systems. So that's the red, green, and blue, respectively. There's been found inside the files purple systems and also the icons for the actual warp drives for both your freighter and also your ships. So I think that's on the cards to be coming into the verse. Now, because you've got to kind of go through the different systems, I think this is going to be end gamey type content. So I would suggest if you haven't already, playing through to the point that you've actually managed to find Echo Camps and you can get the, uh, uh, the Atlas multi tools from the monoliths. Now to do that, you're probably going to have to do those who returned, which is a whole quest line. Now I've done a video recently on those that have returned. I put a link over there. You can go hit that up and go watch that video on those that have returned, but there are prerequisites. So to actually get that mission to even trigger, you have to have done well, you have to find the Echo Camps. But to find the Echo Camps, and working this backwards, you have to have done the Traces of Metal. Now, the Traces of Metal mission gives you the hard frame, the big Minotaur. Now, funny enough, inside of the Aquarius expedition, that was one of our rewards, getting a new hard frame for our Exomex. I think Exomex are going to play a big part in perhaps going forwards. Perhaps these new systems, these purple systems, are going to be a lot more dangerous and we're going to need some sort of minotaur hard frame that's what i'm wondering people inside the view of us so I've, had, I've actually got a full playlist well a video in fact just one video i think on the traces of metal 
and how you go about doing the traces of metal i put that up there so go check that out as well peeps inside the view of us now <laughs> you're not gonna like me so to get the traces of metal to actually trigger and to work there's another prerequisite yeah you've got to have done the purge the purge you've got to have reset the actual system or the simulation okay so that's another prerequisite don't you worry though i've got another video on that a singular video so go watch that up so there's actually three videos <laughs> that i've got that you can watch but hopefully you've already done all that if you haven't done all that you might still be able to jump into this content anyway the only reason why i'm saying you might want to get all this done is because there is actually a four part arg running right now and we've had parts one two and three and parts one two and three started with echoes and there was singularity and i think fractal was the other one correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but anyway there was three parts now to actually get those three parts started you had to have done traces of metal you had to have done the purge you had to have found an echoes camp and that was what triggered sort of the stuff in echoes to start happening echoes was very much end gamey content and when it dropped there was a lot of people saying oh, do I, how do i start this i can't get my auto fake stuff yeah you've got to do quite a lot of prerequisites before it triggers and starts so I'm giving you a little bit of a head start now, people inside the view of us, to get that hit on up, to get that started. Hopefully you've already done it, but if not, there are those videos. And to be fair, there's some of the best missions. There's some of the best stuff out there. And the actual lore, if you like the lore, if you don't mind reading, because, you know, the lore in No Man's Sky is a text adventure. They haven't done voiceovers. Oh, how cool would it be to have voiceovers? Hello, games, if you're watching, if you need a voice actor, I'll do a voice. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, can have me annoying people forever. That'd be freaking awesome to be put my voice into my favourite game ever. Heck yeah. Brilliant, eh? Yes, no, it's not going to happen. That's a pipe dream. In fact, that's, that's more than a pipe dream. That, that, that'd be freaking epic. That would that would make my i would say day but it's it's not it's, that'd make my freaking life <laughs> to have my voice and no oh could you imagine anyway we're going off on a side tangent you've come here for news not my dreams yeah maybe you could help me with that dream hit a like to this video maybe bug the heck out of hello games put voices into no man's sky voice act the darn thing yeah that'd be awesome wouldn't it might make it a bit easier some of the words are a little bit convoluted aren't they but anyway we're still on this tangent news wise watch those dates october around october 21st we know the expedition is coming to an end because it says three weeks three weeks from now which is the first october takes us to the 21st easy math so I think maybe we might see an update 23rd or 22nd, 23rd. And the reason why I think we might see the update then is because we all know what a big update can do. It can break stuff. Now, if they do want to roll this out on PlayStation 5, they want it on PlayStation 5 Pro. They probably want it as smooth as freaking butter, don't they? So hopefully there would have been a round of patches from us guys reporting stuff on Zendesk because we're awesome. Heck yes, you are people reporting on Zendesk. Yes, each and every one of you. Hopefully it'll get all smoothed out, freaking ironed out. And uh, hopefully when it launches on PlayStation 5, come you know early November, it'll be a bug for your experience. Heck yeah. So there we go, peeps. That's kind of what I'm speculating on. Now. I've also got a poll going over on my community tab that I think we need to take a look at. Yeah, let's go and take a look at that. I think it's this button. Let's give it a press and see. Am I on the webs? I am. <laughs> it worked. So this is a poll over on my um, my community tab. I could do a zooming in, couldn't I? There you go. Let's make that really easy for you guys to read. Hopefully that's okay for you to read. So I put things that i think are super likely in no man's sky worlds part two okay so you've got cloud game saves purple star systems manta rays deeper oceans relic planets more underwater biome variety giant traveler statue things yeah most of the above has been data mined and so hopefully in that little black space down there you've probably got some sort of twitter feed scrolling and anything that needs to be highlighted and made big i'll throw onto this screen and cover this up for a moment but yeah there's quite a lot of stuff that has been data mined in the side of the old game files that suggests all these things could be on the cards or if they're not on the cards hello games have at least been playing with them inside of their office okay so there's those 
things that I think are likely. So these are things not so much in the data files, but here we go. Ship racing. Fish models, hence we've already seen the, the rays inside the files, there could be others. Aquariums for the fish to go in. Large boss fauna in deep oceans. Yeah, I've actually got some footage inside the data files that has been sort of put into a mod to allow you to fight giant jellyfish under the oceans. Ho <laughs> ho! Heck yeah! Uh, again, I would put that on the screen if I can find it. Okay, so yeah, it's, it's got energy bars and everything. Little, little, little jellyfish that come out. you got to zap them. Zap them! Yeah, courtesy of that bomber boy. is freaking legendary when it comes to data mining this sort of stuff. Anyway, station override use. Singularity engine drive use. Shuttle customization. Return of the incinerator modules. Living ship weapon modules. Now, all of the above is based on loose ends in No Man's Sky and hints of things to come with a sprinkle of speculation and a little bit of data mining. So all of those are possible. I wouldn't say that they're super like it. It's like ship racing. The only reason why I think we might get ship racing is on the Starborn runner ship. There's a little decal of a little gek with a checkered flag. Now, normally these denote sort of actions. It's like we've got the neutron processor. It's got a little gek with a chef hat on. Or, you know, there's the, the little Corvax with the DNA strand over by the egg synthesizing machine that does all the genetics. There's a few of them. There's even one on the back of the bite beat of a little gek with some headphones on. But there's always function tied to it. Yet, the, the Starborn Runner, although it's a lovely ship, it doesn't do anything really. And the checkered flag sort of denotes racing, doesn't it? So we might get Starship race initiators that have been found in the game files a time ago, but never been used. Less likely, but would be cool. The Ariadne storyline added. Raid missions from the Man Spider construct uh, by Turfus, because he doesn't really have much function right now, does he? And the Ariadne storyline, that's going from the summer mission lore, I think from 2021 now. If I can find my playlist on the summer lore, you might want to watch it. It's really cool, especially if you're a new player and you ain't got a clue what I'm on about. Ariadne the one that looks like Hello Kitty's just gone through a freaking lawnmower. She's actually an imposter. If I can find the video, I'll put a link so you can watch that uh, playlist. It's actually well worth a watch. There's lots of tidbits of lore in there and all sorts of crazy stuff. Anyway, autophage systems and stations, etc. You know, we've got Gek, Corvax, Viking right now. Why not add in autophage systems? That could be quite cool, couldn't it? That would look quite groovy, I think. Ways to create and share custom missions. So again, I've seen a couple of data miners, including that bomber boy, tinkering around with making their own missions with something that's in some sort of mission debugging tool that they've found. It'd be so cool if there was a way to make your own missions and share them with other players. Rework to Quicksilver missions. Yep. I kind of feel that needs to be on the cards, mainly because a lot of these Quicksilver missions, they don't feel very multiplayer orientated. Till systems, older builds of games. So I did a whole speculation video on why I think till systems might be coming in. But it's based upon um, zinc appearing as one of the ingredients or something, as one of the commodities in the text for uh, the teal fireworks that are coming inside of the Quicksilver store. Anyway, I put a video over there so you can watch that speculation video. Cool, and that's pure speculation on my part, those last ones. Anyway, we've got poll results down here. Let's just um, let's take a look at these. So even if we got 50% of that, that's freaking awesome. 65% of people have said that. Pretty darn freaking cool. Super likely would be good on its own. The rest is a bonus, 7%. Not getting hopes up could be none of that, says 9%. Which, yeah, it could be none of that. I mean, to find all that stuff data mined, though, and then for none of it to come in, you know, it could be the case. It's a lot of work just gone out the window, though. A lot of the stuff that does get data mined, I would say maybe 80% of it ends up going into game. It's like ages ago, we found inside the game files lifts for freighters. They were a little bit haphazard when they managed to get them unlocked out of the data mining. They worked to a degree. They never did come into game. Okay, they never came into game. But all the freighter rooms that we found did. So, anyway. We need infinite variety. E3 style. None of this stuff. No fluffy dice for me. 4% of people have chimed in with that. 
To be honest, because we're so far down the biome route now, even myself, I've let go of that sort of idea that we might get the super formula. I kind of feel with what they've done with all the storm mechanics, and now you've got wavy davy trees, you've got all these different weather effects, you've got different particle effects. It makes the planets feel more organic and more alive anyway without the super formula. Yes, it would have been nice to have, you know, un biome locked planets but essentially we've got those with the super exotic planets i would like to see more done with those super exotic planets to sort of i don't know mix them up a bit more make them a bit crazier and i'm hoping if we if hello games introduce these purple systems maybe those super exotic planets can become even more super exotic if hello games done something i don't know maybe reduced base build count in those systems or even remove base building completely in those systems maybe they could deliver in some of the older terrains you know like with the wavy davy snaky paths that you could fly in and under and all that sort of shenanigans and maybe make planets a bit crazier i would love to see that happen or if they introduce the till systems maybe they could do it there anyway want to see poll results a little of all the uh, all the above 15 percent of people hit that one up now i kind of sit with all of the feelings. I've got a little bit of all of that going on, to be fair. I'm trying not to get my hopes up because... But the thing is, is Sean of the Murrays said, we've called it part one because there's more to come. I can't wait for people to explore this universe we've made with fresh eyes. The update is called Worlds Part 1 because I guess there's there's much more to come. He didn't say this year, okay? It, it could happen next year. I don't want to come across as sounding like we're entitled or anything like that because that really isn't the case. Hello Games has never charged for any of these updates. We're at the lap of the gods, the Hello Games gods, when it comes to No Man's Sky and what gets brought into iteration. So, yeah, I'm not getting my hopes up, hopes up or my expectations up. I mean, none of this needs to be delivered this year. They've delivered a heck of a lot this year. And let's face it, the Steam numbers for No Man's Sky right now are still fairly OK. They don't really need to throw another lump into that. But what I'm thinking is they do want to try and boost people to pick up the PlayStation 5 Pro version, hype it up, say how awesome it is, and they want to sell it to this new platform. It's a new console. It's another revenue stream for Hello Games. They need to do something, in my opinion, a bit of a fanfare to say, boom, there's something else. Go grab it on PlayStation Pro. I mean, let's face it, if you've got enough money to throw out to PlayStation Pro, 700 quid sitting in your back pocket, you might have enough money to go and buy yourself a lovely swanky new copy of Dead Man's Sky, right? Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> Open my wallet right now, moths fly out. <laughs> yeah, little gits. Okay, right. There's quite a lot of comments on here as well. I don't think I've read a lot of the comments on here. I've been too busy and locked up into doing other stuff right now. But there we go. We've got Michael Corpley sounding off on some of the things that we would love to see come into game. Heck yes. Mega structures, super formula, modding support everywhere. Heck yes. General, generation procedural. I think a lot of this, if they do introduce the purple systems or the till systems, I wouldn't say it's out the realms of possibility, but at the same time, because of how biomes are right now, I honestly don't think we're going to see super formulas. And mega structures, I would like to hope that we can see them, but I think for plat platforms such as Switch, PlayStation, for the, the, the general Xbox, the box standard Xbox, I kind of think there needs to be concessions. That's why I'm saying perhaps they might have to get rid of base building, because I'm thinking of the lowest de denominators, you know, in some of these systems to deliver in, say, mega structures or cities or extra variety to the planets or um, biomes and terrains of yesteryear. Well, of course, parts worlds two and three. I don't know whether there are going to be three parts, but some people are saying there will be three parts because Sean put out three globes. He does that with a lot of emojis. I kind of think it means that there's free sleeps until the, the update drops. It would help if he wasn't so freaking cryptic, wouldn't it? Mr Sly, I think I'm alone in the fact that I hate Worlds Update. Being a PSVR 2 user, the performance is unplayable. Any planet with water, the performance is so bad I can't play. Bring back the old water for VR or fix the new water. 
Ah, well, I've played on VR on my MetaQuest 3, but it's through my freaking state-of-the-art PC, and it's smooth as butter for me. I freaking love it in VR. It's awesome. But um, PlayStation 2 VR, hopefully you can go into your graphical settings, maybe. Play with some of the settings. Can you knock off maybe the reflections on water? I don't know. Have a little tinker. See if you can fix it yourself. But otherwise, send some video footage over to Zendesk. Let them know what, what you're experiencing. I, I'm fairly sure they'd want to stop people from feeling the way you feel right now. Okay, so here we go. We've got a little bit more here on purple systems and graphics and empty auto pages. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're inside of the data mining in Deedy Doody, we have seen that they can affect these these uh, ruined systems on lush biomes and also radioactive biomes. I've seen a couple of mentions of that inside of data mining. It looks like this new biome of a relic is coming to all different biomes, which could be quite cool. Cool, you. Oh, okay, yeah, I haven't marked this one. JC the Saver. Still hoping we get more to do with settlements and more dungeons. I kind of feel that settlements should get an overhaul so they can be brought over to Nintendo Switch, but also to make us feel like we're more of an overseer, like we've got an active part, so I kind of agree. What about do a... What about something to actually do? Some actual challenges and rewards that meant something more than cosmetic? Chris, I do hope that they add in more lore. I mean, every single part of the ARG so far echoes, you know, and singularity and also fractal to some degree have added in extra things to do and see, especially with the echo camps and learning of a new echo law and language and doing the echoes missions and giving us extra atlas multi tools. There was definitely more to do, but I do get what you're saying. These things that they give us to do only last, last a certain amount of time. They feel pretty shallow, even when they're delivered in, in its ARG format and uh, super excitement for them. I'm excited for every update and then every update I'm playing it, I play it for a while, about three, three weeks or so. It's like this new fishing update. I've now completed the fishing catalogue. What do I do now? Okay, I'd like to see less RNG and more RPG on shipbuilding. Charge more for better pieces. Also making the shipbuilding a little bit more interesting, like on Starfield. Freighter building would be amazing as well. Last but not least, make combat not restricted to Sentinels. Well, combat isn't that restricted to Sentinels. I mean, you can also do combat on sort of like derelict freighters now with little postural monsters. You can also do combat with the brood mothers, which again are organic. So there's a little bit more combat and around abandoned buildings. I think we're going to get combat in the oceans, like I put the footage up earlier. So I think you might get a little bit more of your wish there. I'm hoping to see more engaging larger dangerous fauna on planets. But yeah, I do kind of agree. When it comes to shipbuilding, it'd be nice if we can get custom parts and make our ships look very different to other people's. I'm hoping more expeditions reward us with additional ship parts, like in a drift with the Iron Falcon. Have you seen your stuff on... Yes, I have, Michael Corpley. I have replied over on there. I left you a voice note, sir. Heck yes. But yeah, so he was asking about Light No Fire over there. Um... I do think we're going to see something for Light No Fire. I think we're going to see something happen in December. I think we might see another trailer. But there we go, people. That's pretty much everything I've got for you when it comes to news, speculation. I've also put a big poll out to see where people's expectations are around everything that might get delivered in. And I think people are happy to see whatever comes, to be fair. Uh, I know that I am. I'm always happy when a new update comes to No Man's Sky. It gives me something to do, something to put on my channel. And it is my favourite game of all time. Anyway, people. Well, that and Joust. Oh, and Act Razor. There's quite a lot of games I like when you when you actually put me on the hotspot and say, what are your favourite games of all time? Anyway, we're going off on another tangent. Hope you got your dose of news, people inside the Viewerverse. Now, I was supposed to be flying out next week and I was going to be away for work. I'm not anymore. Been grounded on that one. Yeah, we're just going to do it all remotely. Makes more sense, doesn't it, to be fair? But anyway, people, salute to Mondo. I will be around next week and hopefully, well, this is kind of next week's news now. In fact, this is newsworthy for No Man's Sky to take us all the way up to November. Now, if nothing is going to be happening until now, until either those two dates I mentioned, I kind of think I might jump back on to doing a bit of Dragon's Dogma. Welcome, Arisen. 
we pawns have long awaited your arrival. Learn all you can of this world you must protect. I might start a new playthrough on that now that they've introduced this new casual mode to see if I can live with it a bit better. Is there any other game I could be hitting up other than Dragon's Dogma? Again, let us know in the comments. In November, there is a game coming out called Towers of Ashkabar. If you haven't seen that game, I've probably butchered its name. It's freaking awesome. If I can find some footage, I'll put it on the screen now. It looks like Light No Fire, okay? Light No Fire meets Never Ending Story, crossed and mashed with freaking Zelda. It looks awesome. And that's coming into sort of like early beta type access on PlayStation and PC. It might be coming to other platforms. I'm not too sure. Check your platform to see if it's available. But that has really got me excited. So that's definitely coming to my channel in November. But I think by then we're going to have a new update to No Man's Sky. And who knows how I'm going to shuffle my content when that happens. I'm hoping it's going to be as good as it looks at Towers of Ashkabar. We've been caught out a few times with games, let's face it, especially on this channel. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.